as, as it was intended to be. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't for that long, Glenn. It was literally, I think within a year, I, I decided whether I'm here or not, the news will still come on at half past seven. Yeah. Whether yeah. I'm here or not, Bold and the Beautiful will still play. Mm. So my biggest thing was how do I get onto a sports platform? Because that's literally what I wanted to yeah. ever do was to be on a sports platform. So I, I, I kind of went knocking and said, hey, I think there's something I can do for you guys here. Man, why are we auditioning? Are you auditioning? On a Thursday. And there were some big guys there at that audition, you know? So were you auditioning for, for radio or TV? No, for TV. Okay. For TV then. Um, wanting to move away from continuity. So, mm -hmm. hey, there were some big names. And I'm sure there were yeah. a lot of people obviously judged you because you were just that guy who was introducing shows. Ne? Exactly. Yeah, but coming up next, Mopé, man. <laughs> coming up <laughs> next, Generation. Because let me tell you something, you know, I've been, I've always been a, you know, grew up playing soccer. And when I wanted to represent players, I remember when I knocked on doors, yeah. you know, going to Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Palace because they knew me very well. But they didn't Brake, take you seriously. Yeah, Brake because Brake you're a knew DJ. me well. Ivan Kosa knew me well, and every time I say, Ivan, here's the place, ah, ah, DJ, <laughs> DJ, <laughs> DJ, <laughs> DJ, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I can imagine, that's exactly what you went through. Yeah, but the nice thing is, is you know, like, continuity had become a part of the DNA, but for me, I didn't want it to stick for too long, yeah. because of that problem, and, and things like sports and things like news take a bit of credibility, so you can't... Be that person who's all chance, Angie. You know, you just want to do it because uh, it is there. You need to do your homework. You need to know your story. <laughs> you need to have had the passion for it. And, and I suppose, Glenn, you would know. I mean, with the various radio stations you've been on, that it's not just for you a job. This is a passion. Yeah. And a lot of people that get into the job now, they think just because Glenn can do it, just because X and Y can do it, so can I. Mm. And, the, and the, the sad part is that it isn't like that. If you don't have a passion for news, you don't have a passion for DJing, you don't have a passion for sport, then maybe you stick around to that that you have a passion for. Because I think the, also the tricky thing when you when, when you when you decide to to do soccer, um, both on radio or TV, and you've never been a professional soccer player, yeah. here you are sitting with Dwight York. Yeah. Do you do you, do you know what I mean? Sure. Sitting with. Peter or Musiman, or whoever, yeah. and you think, okay, I've never played soccer. They play. Not only did they play soccer, but they're also coaches as well. Yeah. So you need to prove yourself and do your homework and work extra hard than those two people. Hundred percent. The thing is, you your responsibility is far far greater than just being the expert. You've got to prod them. You've got to make sure that the debate, the uh, the analysis, is going in a certain direction because they're not broadcasters. I always say to the guys that. In that space and it doesn't matter who you with it can be with the john barnes it can be with the dwight york it can be with the andy towns and whoever the person is they are human but they're former players yeah you're the broadcaster you're mm. the current player right now yeah, so yeah your 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 mission you in life them, you, you gotta lead them yeah. so that's one i will conduct <laughs> uh, absolutely and yeah. and I, one thing one, one thing i know about you is that you are passionate about listen you are passionate about your job i don't care who says what robert is the kind of guy he can prep the entire show on his own robert can use his own money <laughs> but what i know about robert he would use his resources to make sure the show is is successful you know even if he doesn't get assistance from management things that he does not get Robert will make sure that he gets them and he makes a show successful. And I think what, what I find challenging in South Africa, everyone likes talking about freedom of speech. Yeah. But obviously, uh, you uh, being involved, you obviously uh, sometimes challenge the bosses, mm -hmm. soccer bosses, mm -hmm. you know, who might have issues with certain things that you say. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a possibility of you saying something on your show and upsetting a soccer boss. How do you deal with that? I don't mm -hmm. work for them. Mm, I, I don't work for them and, and the bottom line is that with all the gazillion threats that I've had from football people and you know we've kind of also gone in the direction of one's life being completely threatened is that I don't work for them as a broadcaster I work for the broadcaster in this case for radio I work for the SABC they're the people that have brought me to come here football yes they are partners of the SABC like they are partners of other broadcasters. But it's also 
indicative of us to make sure that they do their job well. It's also indicative of us to make sure that the coaches are doing their job well, the players are playing their games properly, and they're being watched, and people are being given a platform as well to give their responses on air. So, you know, a threat from a human being, just because you own a club, does not make you any more important than a person who pays 40 rand to buy their ticket and go watch a game. So they need to be very strong, ET Pro Neutral in the morning, ah. and uh, go to the offices. I'll come to the studio. Yeah, because I think the funny thing about people who threaten you is that they are faceless. Yeah. They are scared to come out, you know. And and the funny thing is, I know with Jomo, you know, I've spent some time with Jomo. Jomo is the kind of guy, when he's threatened, he talks out, Yo! <laughs> what? You're threatening me! <laughs> It's not going to. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like and I was with them last week. I yeah. Mean, Ford was giving him the the sponsored vehicle, you yeah. know, for him to go and find the next jersey number ten. And I hadn't seen Jomo in such a long time. And exactly yeah. the way that you're talking, I, I mean, know. before the event, he was exactly like that. Exactly. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 board meeting. Uh, yes. Hey. Yeah. You know. So very, you know, animated, but you can tell. I mean, anyone that disrespects Jomo has no clue or idea about life. Mm. As a great player that he was, a great administrator, now a great businessman, uh, you got to give him kudos for that. Not too many people, especially Absolutely. football 